Hello, welcome to the channel. Uh, been a while since I've uploaded, but got a new car, BMW M4 F82, uh, stage two. Bit of an animal, to be fair. So I want a roof rack, but with it being the carbon roof, they don't come with the fixing points underneath the trim for the uh, for the roof rack to screw into. Now, there's information online, but there's no videos. And, that could be that no man wants to cry on camera if they fuck it up, but I'm willing to take that um, take that chance. So this roof rack rail here, you lift it up at the back, pull it back this way, just unhook the piece that slits in the front. Once you've got it pulled back maybe half an inch, you can then pry it up and it unclips off these rails. I'll show you when I do that side. Um, so what we need to do is we need to measure the center of this mark here where it you can see as it tapers in you mark the center there and then the center between the edge and that edge there and that will give you the uh, location point for the, the, the mounting plate so you drill a hole 15 mil uh, once you get the carbon and the uh, the adhesive out of the way there's a, a bolt that you need to take out and then a bolt that you need to get from BMW that you put back in. We'll put some Tiger Seal around the end so it's uh, sealed from the weather. And that is the plan for today. Uh, hopefully nothing goes wrong. Uh, <laughs> it's one of them, isn't it? Right, I'll get you set up and then uh, we'll, we'll start with the process. So all I'm doing here is I'll pull up this little access for the roof rack itself. And stop and be careful you don't scratch your car. All I'm doing is I'm using a little right angled hook so I can get that underneath. Angle it. That's just going to allow me to just pull a little bit. I'm going to use this as a pull as well. I'm pulling the trim towards the back of the car. Now this piece will hit the window. You lift that up a little bit and then continue pulling. There's a bit. Bit of a dodgy job. Right, so I'm over the lip there now, I think. Not quite. Keep pulling. It's a bit of a... You'll see it comes slowly. And all we're doing is we're getting that so it's out of the front of the lip because that tucks under. You know, we have it slid back, we can use a little bit of a plastic pry tool just trying to lift the clips up slowly but surely you don't want to break them once you get the first one out it's not too bad um, Come back a little bit more. See, I'm leaving it raw because you're going to face these same situations. Right, push it from the front. The last thing we want to do is break our trims. Yeah, oh, yeah, that'll come now. I can feel it. It's a little, a little easy. You can feel it coming up. I think this has been off before because someone stuck it down. Let's see if they haven't done the job properly. Let's hope it's not all stuck down. Yeah, stuck down all the way. So they broke these clips. So. As you come along now, they broke the clips on the rear. That wasn't me. I'll show you in a minute, there's adhesive on them. So nice and slow. Run your fingers along it, it'll keep the tension. So, neat. There you go, it's off. If you can see, someone stuck them back down with sticky sticky. Um, so I'll have to clean them edges and uh, 
and deal with that. Okay. Right, so all I've done, as if you can see, I measured the distance halfway between these two points. So I think that's 3.5 centimeters. So the middle is um, 1.25. And then here's the dot I've made. I'm gonna make the holes here. And then the same on the rear. Hopefully they line up. Um, so nothing to it really, just smoke some holes and, <laughs> and fingers crossed. Uh, Let's see how she goes. Alright, here goes nothing. Small pilot hole first. Make sure you get it in the right spot. I'm gonna cock this up. That's it. Now we'll go to the bigger bit. And then uh, you can feel as soon as you hit the top of the nut, so don't press too hard. Just nice general hole. We'll switch drill bits and we'll do the bigger hole. Now for the nerve racking bit. Nice and slow. Well, you need the speed of the drill to be high because it's carbon fiber. Reasonably painless, hopefully. We'll soon see. Let's clear this off. Now you're experiencing this the same as I am, just figuring it out. So I can just see the top of the bolt there. So by the looks of it, if I get you in a bit closer, you can see there's still some adhesive underneath the carbon. Uh, I'm gonna have to try and pick that out and then see how the bolt lines up. Um, so we're just figuring this out together. So I'll pause you. And I'll just get an idea of what I gotta do to get that out. So what I've found in my garage is a little Dremel grind a bit and I'll just give it a little bit of a whirl just to see how she goes it's a little bit sketchy I'm going to get into metal I'm pretty much to metal there, it's got a little bit more to do here. Still a little bit here on the edge if you can see. I just gotta get the bit out of the Allen hole, which I'll do with a pick. Right, as you can see, I've dug the um, the bond out of the hole for the torx bit. I just want to give it a little bit of a widening. Okay, that's some scratch paint work. I should come out now with a claw. What I don't want to do is lift the or crack the, the roof. So I've already cracked the bolt. I'm just going to easily and gently thread this out now. See if she comes. I can see it still needs to be 
ground out a bit here so I would say that bolt that mark needs to come slightly this way on the next drill it doesn't help that I've got a 14 mil drill bit and it's a 15 mil I need um, so let me just clean that up a bit and then we'll get that one out nice all I've done is just grind out the edge a little bit I'm talking not even a mil not half a mil hopefully this will come out now One, Whoa. three more fucking nail biting holes to do. Okay, look, we'll move on to the next one. So the same again here, pilot hole on the mark that you've made. the change in tone when you um, when you hit the metal now for the big bit nice and slow under the pressure keep the speed high on the drill you see yourself go through the carbon Hit the adhesive. Still in the cabin there. Same again then, we'll try to get this, um, this adhesive off. There you go. It'll come. It's a nice little pick tool, nice and slow. We'll probably have to do the same again with this one. Just edge this, this edge out here a little bit with the with the Dremel tool. If you've got a 15mm, which they didn't have and I know knew I needed, you wouldn't be needing to do this dicking round extra step, so. Well, Switch over to the grind a bit. I'm just going to take this edge off. Turn towards the camera slightly. <laughs> Be careful with the carbon fiber dust, it will kill you. See how we're getting on. I'm doing this live because no doubt you'll want to do exactly the same and you'll want to see the whole process rather than me just editing bits out. If I struggle, I'll show you I'm struggling. So this will be a raw video. Um, I think that might do it to be fair. Give it one last uh, suck with you there. We'll get uh, the last bits of crap out of the, out of the talk. There's a bit of a crack, a bit of a strain to break her free. I imagine there's some kind of sealant on there. 
and I can see that that's still catching the edge of that carbon just a little bit. So what I don't want to do is thread the screw up and lift the carbon and crack it. I would rather spend the extra time just getting that where it used to be. But if it means dicking round a little bit longer, then I'll do it. Can that man love it? Yeah, she does. What you gotta be careful of as well is the threads that these go into are on like a plate, and that plate can slide and move, so you don't want to put any pressure on. Uh, what I will do as well is I'll get some lacquer, I'll do that now actually, and I'll just seal the edge of the carbon. What I don't want is water coming or moisture from the inside getting between the carbon layers and then you get a frost in around here as the, as the layers separate, so I'll do that now. I'll... All I'm going to do is put some lacquer in and around the edge. Um, Gonna get sealed up with some RTV, Tiger Seal, or wherever. Um, it's just that cut edge will be absorbent now, so if I can give it some lacquer to absorb, it just gives it that extra little bit of protection. And that's it, I've done the other one. And that's their moles. I'll do the other two. You don't see, need to see the other process, so I'll do the other two. I'll just show you, um, and then, oh, sorry, what I'll do is I'll drill the other two, let me get my words straight, and then uh, we'll seal these holes up and give them, uh, give them the final seal, and then hopefully that'll be where we need to be. Fingers crossed. Whoa. Right, so that's all four holes drilled. What I did find was, because these roofs are bonded on, the, the measurement was slightly different the other end. So when I've measured the same distance, can you see the hole slightly off? So I've had to like mill the hole slightly down towards this end just to get this bolt out. I would be very careful. I know how people push the threads in now because the threaded part of this bolt is just a plate underneath held on with two tabs. If the edge of this bolt gets caught on the carbon, as you're unthreading, it'll push them tabs down and then the threads will fall out then, it means you have to take out your head lining. So be careful. You can crack the bolt off and it's got a little bit of a wiggle. So if the edge is just catching underneath the carbon, just push the torque up a bit and it'll lift that edge out and then uh, you'll be kind of where you need to be. So that's the four holes drilled. What I'll do now is I'll prep these two with the lacquer like I did the other side and then we'll get the sealant on the go. Right, so all the drill holes have been drilled. I've sealed the edges with lacquer that's now dried. I have no doubt the Tiger Seal or what you, you, whatever sealant you use. Um, a lot of people use like the, um, the JB Weld stuff. This Tiger Seal dries, doesn't crack, doesn't shrink, stays flexible. And once that stuff goes on, it ain't ever coming off. Um, what you'll need is these are the new bolts that come in. They've got a threaded bar, a uh, threaded piece. In the inside so that screws in then that allows you to have your roof rack these are the ones that come out i'll put the part number for these in the description or up on the screen uh, depending tools i've used for the job is i used a 14 mil but you need a 15 mil a selection of picks um i use some little dremel bits uh just to you know feather the edges when if you're slightly off uh like i say I measured it the same all round, but because the roof had been put on slightly to the one side, the measurements were, were off because I measured from the, like the, 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 the white edge on the car, if you like. Just a pilot drill for your first hole. So what I'll do now is I'll get some sealants into the holes around these, and then uh, once they're in, you leave them for 24 hours. So join me on the car. All I'm doing here, I'm going to fill the hole and the surrounding area with some sealant. This is what's going to make your car watertight at the end. So you want to make sure 
that you get this. I'm going to try and get it in between the bond between the, the fiberglass, not fiberglass, carbon fiber, and the uh, and the metal. I'm even going to put a little bit in and around the thread. This will ensure a good seal. This is an E16 or E14, sorry. tight with this I don't want to go too slack either if you don't get any on your on your paint because the shit won't come up after it dries and all I'm doing now is I'm filling the surrounding area up with sealant there you can come in through. Pull me glove tight and we should get a nice seal all the way around. Yellow? No. No. <laughs> Not since he left anyway. Okie doke. Smearing it round, making me make sure I get a decent seal. You want to take time with this. You may be able to get it a little bit prettier than I can, but I'll say that. As good as I'm going to get it. Sticky shit, I'll give it that. But I'd be pretty confident that's not going to leak now. Um, just be careful not to get it anywhere. You know, this is going to be underneath anyway. Can't say that. Yep. So you might be able to get it pretty. Uh, but I'm happy with that. I know that won't leave once it dries. So I'll do that four more times and then I'll come back to you. Right, so that's all four holes screwed in. The seal is on. It ain't the prettiest job I've ever done. But working with that stuff. But with your luck, there's no... No, there's no gaps. It isn't going to seal. Looks worse close up. I mean, that's what it looks like. And then, obviously, this is covered anyway. Um, don't know how, I, you know, you're probably not going to get it any smoother or neater than I am. You can clearly see it's all, and I've just smeared it all in the hole as well as you saw. Um, that's them all done. So that'll sit like that now for 24 hours, and then technically. All good to go. So I'll give you a little bit of a instruction how to put the, the trims back on and then I'll show you the roof rack on tomorrow. I'd like to put the trim back on. Let's get the 
little tab underneath the front first and then the clips, the first ones by right here just want to get the back in first just to get it started it is a little bit of a manipulation a little bit of a tap like that and move your back the next one's by right here tap next one, tap all the way along and if you remember my back two tabs on this side were, were broken so I put double sided tape clean both surfaces give them a good press down so that's that one if you can see what I mean just just goes under there, it's a little taper, that's why we pulled it back just so it could come off and then uh, that's that side, all in, nice and tidy as you can see roof's dirty from uh, from all the drilling and you can see in there uh, beautiful, I'll put some padded tape either side like I did on my last one and that should be it. I've tested the, the threads for my roof rack, they fit them perfect. So that, if you're gonna have a go, is how you drill a carbon roof without crying. Uh, please like and subscribe so you can find your way back to the channel. Give it a little bit of a, a like. Thank you very much.